number six, Arachnaman. The WCW <laughs> decided to give Brad Armstrong the gimmick of Arachnaman. Arachnaman had a striking resemblance yeah. to Spider-Man, and it was no surprise when Marvel Comics threatened to sue WCW yeah. and were forced to take the superhero character off TV. Yes, that's what it was. Five, Christmas creature. <laughs> it got this. That's Spider-Man. Arachnaman. What's good y'all, it's your boy Ross back at it again with another video. So we're gonna check out top 100 worst wrestling gimmicks ever. This should be a great one. I've been looking forward to checking this video out, uh, video out ever since I saw it in my uh, sub box. I was like, you know what? This should be a great video to check out. I've seen some of you guys uh, mention that I should check this out on Twitter as well. It's 33 minutes. So sit back, relax. This is going to be one of those longer form videos, but I think this is going to be a good one because there have been some awful wrestling gimmicks. Some of them I've seen before. Some of them I probably have not seen. There's been awful wrestling gimmicks over the years, and it should be a good time to sit back and, and watch some of these awful gimmicks and, and just kind of wonder how did this happen why was this on television back in the day like this should be a great one appreciate all the love and support you guys have shown on the channel also if you're not subscribed to wrestlemania go ahead give them a, a subscription this channel is pretty dope when it comes to wrestling content i'm looking forward to this one this should be a great one and let's do the damn thing man when analyzing the decorated history of pro wrestling, it's truly staggering how many atrocious gimmicks have been presented in top company. Wait, whoa, 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 hold on. Not my boy Triple H. When analyzing Wait the a minute. decorated history of pro wrestling, it's truly staggering how many atrocious gimmicks. <laughs> Terrorizing. I think I have seen this clip. I think I, not this particular clip, but I, I think I have seen this was one of Triple H's early gimmicks, terrorizing. That's, gimmicks have been presented that's in funny, bro. Companies such as WWE <laughs> and WCW. And most of the gimmicks on this list are remembered for incredibly negative reasons and leading fans to question what that wrestling company <laughs> Repo was man. in debuting such awful gimmicks. Join us now as WrestleMania looks at the top Repo man. <laughs> worst wrestling gimmicks. Be sure to subscribe and hit that notification bell for daily wrestling Oh, this is going to be a good one, man. On Facebook for I'm looking forward videos. to this one, man. Also, check out our new website, WrestleMania.com. Oh, my there God. you will find some exclusive lists and breaking news. Subscribe to Number WrestleMania if you haven't already. Super Shockmaster. Oh, the Shockmaster man. is well established yeah. as having arguably the worst <laughs> debut in pro wrestling. Shockmaster. The WCW weren't giving up hope on the character as he proceeded to debut a new version of the character titled a Super Shockmaster. <laughs> the Super Shockmaster would wear a cheap blue mask and it was clear that WCW were just trying to get any value they could out of the Shockmaster name. Or where's the original? Well, we'll get into that. Shockmaster. Number 99, <laughs> The Executioner. The Executioner was portrayed by Terry Gordy, and the gimmick was that of an ex-Druid. The Executioner teamed up with Mankind and feuded with The Undertaker, but the crowd failed to connect to such a lackluster character. Yeah. Number 98, The Terrorist. The WCW decided to debut a character known as The Terrorist on their product in the late 80s. Now, you can probably guess what the gimmick was supposed to represent. And yeah. It's unclear what on earth WCW executives were thinking at the time. I don't Number know. Number 97, <laughs> New Year's Baby. A former WWE champion Big Show was portrayed some atrocious gimmicks during his yes. career. Yes. For instance, in late 2013, Vince McMahon was unhappy with his weight gain, so he made the Big Show become the New Year's baby on Raw. This was obviously designed to humiliate the Big Show. And bro, Vince has a very sick uh, sense of humor, bro. It's, it's so sick. Like, that's, that's the Big Show. And they had this man doing this. Ah, uh, so messed up. <laughs> and it's widely regarded as a low oh point. Oh my in his god, career. for sure. Number 96, Cha Cha Ping. What? But before Gunther became the ring general, he portrayed a character called Cha Cha Ping. This would see the talented wow. star wear a green singlet. It's safe to say it's obvious why this character failed to get over. Number 94. Wow, he has come a very long way. Thank goodness. <laughs> Five, the Black Scorpion. The Black Scorpion was an infamous gimmick in WCW that was portrayed by several different wrestlers. The character debuted as an arch nemesis for Sting, and initially the role was played by Ollie Anderson and then later Al Perez. 
And when Perez quit, WCW had to think of an alternative creative outcome. It was at the 1990 Starcade event that Sting defeated the Scorpion and finally unmasked the character, revealing Ric Flair to be the one behind the gimmick. Wow. Number 94, Techno Team 2000. Techno Team. Techno Team were a team that <laughs> debuted in WWE's new gen era. The duo wore silver and maroon outfits and were supposedly ahead of their time. The gimmick was designed to be a futuristic style gimmick, but it fell completely flat with the yeah. audience. Number 93, Piggy James. What? Piggy James was one of the more controversial and hated gimmicks in stories oh, of the PG era. Oh, I remember it saw this. Layla and Michelle McCool constantly yeah. belittle Piggy James and mock her weight, and they would call her Piggy James. Yeah. Layla and McCool would even wear a fat suit in the hopes of embarrassing James as much as humanly possible. Number 92. Yeah, that, that was always kind of weird because Mickey James always looked good in my eyes and I think a lot of fans' eyes. She was, a, you know, good worker in the ring. So I didn't get that. I mean, I guess she wasn't as skinny as all the other girls, but at the same time, I think she was looking good. So I don't know. I don't know about that one. The goon. <laughs> what in a Napoleon Dynamite is this guy? The goon. <laughs> Two, the goon. What? The goon was, in essence, a hockey player tag wrestler. Oh. That was the most substance the gimmick had. Interestingly, it's widely believed that Vince McMahon wanted Chris Jericho to play the dreaded character, oh, but no. thankfully Y2J turned the proposal Please, down. Thank goodness. Number 91, Paul Burchill, incest character. Paul Burchill's pirate persona was fun and unique, but the character he portrayed after the persona had run its course was truly disturbing. In 2008, Burchill and his kayfabe sister Katie Leah would become an on-screen duo, and the controversial gimmick and storyline was that they were in love with each other. I Number think 19, I Frank. vaguely remember that. I think I do. I vaguely seeing that, but at the same time, I'm glad I don't really remember it because that's just awful. <laughs> Tejo. A WWE would try to get anything and everything over in the new gen era, and that included a wrestler who was a magician. Fantasia wore a black and white mime mask oh that gosh. revealed matching face paint when removed, and he performed basic magic tricks that the fans could care less about. Oh Number 89, gosh. Evid Sullivan. In 1994, WCW debuted Dave Sullivan, who was supposed to be the dyslexic brother of Kevin Sullivan. Due to his dyslexia, he would mispronounce his name as Evid. This was a gimmick that oh. had aged horribly and would have no place in modern wrestling. Yeah. Number 88, Damien Demento. Damien Demento is mostly known for being in the first ever main event of Raw against The Undertaker. Wow. The gimmick was that of an individual who hailed from the outer reaches of your mind, and he was mentally disturbed. Well, that's according to the WWE commentators, at least. Number huh. 87, Farouk. Gladiator yeah. gimmick. When WWE signed former WCW champion Ron Simmons, they of course decided to give him the most <laughs> ridiculous gimmick of they would. His first gimmick in WWE was that of Farouk Assad, who was supposedly a gladiator, and the only way we were supposed to know that he was a gladiator was from his bizarrely misshapen helmet. Ah, oh, man, it's something about WWE and them wanting to use just awful helmets. It just... You would have... I mean, it makes sense why they had Karrion Cross his first go-around debut in such, such a cringe helmet. They hadn't gotten away from it. They've been doing it for many years. I hope we were at the end of that. No more cringe helmets. Stop it. Why was he blue? Number 86, Muffy. Muffy was Stephanie McMahon's personal trainer, and she only made a few appearances during the Attitude Era before her undeveloped character was scrapped. Definitely, Definitely. don't remember this. Number 85, Yoshi Kwan. WCW's Yoshi Kwan was a gimmick which saw British wrestler Chris Champion wearing makeup in an attempt to resemble an Asian character. Oh the gimmick was tasteless, my. backwards, and had really no place that, in wrestling. Oh my Number gosh. 84, Braun the <laughs> Leprechaun. What? Braun the Leprechaun first appeared in the summer of 1996 in WCW, and he was managed by Jimmy Hart. It was unclear if the gimmick was supposed to be serious or not, as every single segment Braun was involved in felt awkward and cheap. Yeah. Nevertheless, the persona was portrayed by Dwayne Bruce, who would go on to become a trainer at the WCW power plant. Number 83, Bongo the Caveman. The Bongo the Caveman gimmick only lasted weeks in WCW not and weeks. for good reason. The gimmick was portrayed by Tim Parker, and he wore a loincloth outfit and carried a club. It was utterly ridiculous that WCW genuinely thought that this would get over. <sighs> Number 82, Leviathan. Yeah. Long before Batista was, well, Batista, Batista yeah. portrayed a character in FCW called Leviathan. Mm -hmm. This gimmick was basically a demon, but it was incredibly cringeworthy. And it was apparently <laughs> Batista wasn't comfortable in the role. And then uh, I think when he got to the main roster, I think he was the deacon. He was like some type of deacon. 
at some point. He's had a few character changes before we got the animal Batista, so. Thankfully, he moved on to something better. Number 81, Black Rain. What? When Goldust signed with TNA, he became Black Rain. I Black don't. Black Rain was a more sinister version of the beloved Goldust I character. I definitely didn't know this. Flat. The most interesting thing about the persona was that Black Rain had a pet rat. Yeah, that was it. Number 80, The Gobbledygooker. The <laughs> Survivor Series saw one of the most infamous debuts of the all gobbly time. Gooker. The Gobbledygooker made his WWE debut at the Survivor Series event. <laughs> and he revealed to be the Gooker played by Hector Guerrero. <laughs> The crowd in attendance began to boo as they expected something special, and they certainly didn't expect. Bro, fucking gobbledy gooker, bro. It's just. <laughs> this is why I say each era of wrestling has some of the most cringe. It, it happens. This generation, the uh, the ruthless aggression era, the attitude era, even the golden era of wrestling. Some would say. It, it's they've always had cringe moments, cringe segments, cringe characters. I I don't think there's much else to say than a fucking fake egg with a fake chicken ho hopping out of it to let you know everything you need to know. Take someone to appear dressed in a literal bird costume. Initial plans called for the gobbledygooker to represent the company as a mascot, yet due to the atrocious feedback from fans. The character was thankfully scrapped. That, Number that 79, looks awful. Braden Walker. Now Chris Harris attained great oh. success in TNA, yet when he signed for WWE, he was turned into an utter joke. Harris would become Braden Walker on the ECW brand, and it was unclear what exactly his gimmick was supposed to be, other than making the occasional knock knock joke. The gimmick was scrapped quickly, and WWE had no future plans for the yeah. former TNA tag team champion. Number 78, ECW Zombie. When yep, WWE's version I, I, of I know about this one. <laughs> ECW's to debut zombie. a zombie character. This was supposed to be a serious character, but it was laughable at best, oh. and it was brutalized by the sound <laughs> to the delight of the ECW audience. <laughs> Number 77, Jim Neidhart, a KKK member. Whoa. Whoa. On an independent show in 1995, Virgil was set to take on a wrestler known as Thug. And when Thug made his way down to the ring, it appeared as if Thug and his bodyguard were dressed in a Ku Klux Klown outfit. The bodyguard then revealed himself to be former Heart Foundation member Jim Neidhart. Wow! He then proceeded to lay out Virgil and would even begin to hang him from the ring ropes. Number 76. Yep. Sounds about, uh, sounds, uh, sounds about white. <laughs> That's what I was trying to say there. Yeah. Wrestling has always had that the undertones of stereotypes and <laughs> racism. It, it, you know, it's it's been a part of wrestling for many, many years, but wow. That's that's wild. The Stormtrooper. The Stormtrooper debuted in the Stormtrooper Smoky Mountain Wrestling, and the gimmick <laughs> was that the Stormtrooper was a literal Nazi. Yeah, that's right, a Nazi. A masked what? man would goose step into the ring and would wear swastikas all over his body. Even in 1988, this might have seemed a little over the top. Now we went from bad to holy shit. What was that? That's wrestling for you. <laughs> Number 75, 7. When Goldust returned to WCW in late 1999, he began what the to play a character known as Seven. The character is mostly known for bizarre and creepy vignettes, which saw him standing outside a child's bedroom window. The gimmick the? was reported to have been based on the strangers from the movie Dark City, but was eventually dropped after there was concern that the gimmick was being interpreted as a child abductor. What the? Number 74, <laughs> When the Bell Venus character had run its natural course, WWE decided to reintroduce Venus under his real name of Sean Morley, and he would eventually become an authority figure in WWE known as Chief Morley. This gimmick was completely lifeless and received yeah. zero reaction from the audience. Number 73, The Renegade. The Renegade was basically WCW's yeah. cheap version of the Ultimate Warrior. Yeah. Nobody could ever figure out the point of the character's yeah, existence. Yeah, what's, what's the point? WCW were doing okay in terms of ratings and the creative direction was being well received. So to debut a character that was in essence a parody of an iconic WWE gimmick seemed what's, nonsensical. Yeah, what was the point Number of that? Number 72, Buzzkill. 
Vince Russo would do anything he could to make WCW stand out, and this extended the ripping off beloved WWE characters. Uh -huh. Russo would give Brad Armstrong the gimmick of Buzzkill, and it was a complete rip off of his brother, the Road Dogs gimmick in WWE. Wow. Russo would even implement a theme that was oddly similar to the New Age Outlaws trademark theme song. The gimmick, to nobody's surprise, was met with disdain from whatever fans WCW had left at the time. Number 71, Fat Chick Thriller. Following WCW's what? Crash at the Beach event in 2000, WCW decided to repackage Mike Awesome as the Fat Chick Thriller. Awesome would become infatuated with larger women, and this is notoriously one of the worst gimmicks WCW could have possibly given the talent. You can't make this up. The Fat chick th thriller bro he, he i'm not here to judge anybody and what they like in they women but bro that's his name the fat chick thriller this video is great this is this is this is fantastic did star <laughs> number seven tl hopper a WWE's obsession of what? debuting oh wrestlers with professions God, went bro. too far when they debuted <laughs> a TL fucking Hopper. plumber, bro. Hopper was a stereotypical plumber and <laughs> fell flat upon arrival. Oh How a plumber gimmick was supposed to get over in WWE is anyone's guess. <laughs> oh my guess. God, bro. Number 69, Stuttering Matt Morgan. When WWE reintroduced Matt Morgan in 2005, they decided to give him a stuttering gimmick. This was designed to be a heel gimmick, but a stutter instantly <laughs> making a wrestler a heel was a bold and daring creative oh my choice. God, Number 68, no. <laughs> The Real Double J. A road dog has been given some awful gimmicks over his career, but The Real Double J was perhaps the worst. Following Jeff Jarrett's WWE departure, Road Dog would claim that he was the real singer of the song With My Baby Tonight, and the gimmick and character was quickly relegated to the lower mid card. Uh, yeah. Number 67, The Funkasaurus. Oh, this was... Yeah, I remember this. This... Oh, God. This was not entertaining. For me, personally, I, I, I just thought... I just wanted to hit him off my TV screen at the time. The fans were stunned when Brodus Clay returned to WWE TV as a dancing dinosaur from Planet Funk. Despite the gimmick and character having a short shelf life, WWE put a ton of effort into making the character work, and he was even given an extended segment yeah, at WrestleMania 28. I just Number 66, get it off my screen. Lee Cassidy. Before Al Snow had an interesting relationship with a mannequin head, yeah. he would portray Leaf Cassidy in WWE. Cassidy would join forces with Marty Jannetty to form the new Rockers, and the crowd simply didn't care about yep. the reincarnation of one of the most popular tag teams of all time. They didn't care. Number 65, Shinobi. The new Rockers gimmick wasn't the only gimmick WWE would hope to get Al Snow over, as he also portrayed an infamous character called Shinobi, <laughs> who was a ninja assassin. The character <sighs> is mostly known for losing to Shawn Michaels, and interestingly, WWE would bring a version of the character back in 2004 for a one-off match with Tajiri. Number 64, Pointless. Tugboat. Fred Ottman is considered to be one of the nicest guys in wrestling. But well, the majority of his gimmicks are remembered for all the wrong reasons. Yeah. His character of Tugboat was supposed Tugboat. to be trained by Hulk Hogan, and it would see Tugboat wear a red striped shirt and a sailor's hat. The most entertaining thing about the gimmick was that Tugboat would often pull an imaginary cord out of an air horn and make the hilarious... <laughs> Number 63, Doink, Doink the yeah. Friendly Clown. When yeah. Doink the Clown first arrived in WWE, he was presented as a... And this would work if you're afraid of clowns. Oh, this probably for people who have that that phobia. Oh, this this probably just horrified you seeing him on screen. But me personally, just it's just a clown. He's just like I right, okay. Menacing and scary heel. Then WWE made the call to turn him babyface, and this is when the gimmick went completely downhill. The gimmick turned into a kid-friendly, cartoonish uh -huh. character that fell dramatically down the card. And it could have been, like like he was saying, if they would have kept him healed, because people are genuinely afraid of clowns, could, you know, you can definitely do something with that, you know what I'm saying? Like, kind of spin that in a way, but once they turn into this family-friendly situation, it just, you know, it it doesn't really work. It was a massive shame as the villainous version of Doink had so much potential. Yeah. Number 62, Vinny Vegas. Before Diesel and Kevin Nash came Vinny Vegas. Wow. Vegas was basically a wisecracking mobster, but it was apparent that this wasn't the gimmick or character that was going to take Nash to superstardom. Yeah. Number 61, 
Oz. I think I've seen this one. Vegas, Nash yep. also portrayed one of the most notorious <laughs> yeah. comics in WCW history as he portrayed a character known as Oz. Oh Oz was a character God, based on the bro. children's story that was Nash wear a ridiculous lime green robe yeah. and a laughable fake grey beard. Oh, Number man. 60, Who? A gimmick being introduced so WWE commentators can make terrible puns is never a good idea. Yeah. But that was the logic of giving Jim Neidhart the Who gimmick in the 90s. Fans <laughs> literally knew nothing about the gimmick or character, and Who's matches just consisted of a few minutes of Vince McMahon and Jerry Lawler making unfunny jokes at the commentary desk. Who? Number 59, <laughs> General Hugh Rection. When Hugh Morris became the... General Huge Erection? Nah, that, that wasn't the name. There's no Funny way. Funny jokes at the commentary desk. Number 59, General Huge Erection. General Huge Erection. Yep. That's wrestling for y'all, man. Erection. When Hugh Morris became the leader of the Misfits in action this is just in WCW, wild, he decided to rebrand himself as General Huge Erection. The obvious pun aside, the gimmick was a complete waste of time as the only thing different about Morris's presentation was that he wore military themed gear. Number 58, The Shark. John Tenter was so determined to make his shark oh gimmick work in WCW God, that he even changed the tattoo on his arm from a tiger to a shark. Wow. The gimmick of a wrestler having characteristics of sharks could only go so far. Yeah. Despite Tenter's commitment, the gimmick was never going to work. Yeah. Number 57, Giant Silver. Giant Silver had size, presence, and WWE were no doubt going to try and make him a main event attraction. Mm -hmm. Silver would become a member of the Oddities faction, but whenever he wrestled, he was quickly exposed as he was appalling in the ring. Uh, His gimmick was literally that he was tall and would wear yeah. casual clothing like he was visiting a local mall. Yeah. Number 56, Golga. Speaking of the Oddities faction, Golga's gimmick was perhaps even worse. Olga was portrayed by John Tenter, and his gimmick saw him wear a mask due to a bone disorder, and he would be obsessed with Eric Cartman from South Park. Number uh, 50. So, so cringe. Five. The, the fake, fake Undertaker. Undertaker? The WWE believed that debuting a fake version of The Undertaker and then reintroducing the real Undertaker would do major business, so much so that a match between the two main evented at the 94 SummerSlam. The gimmick was widely criticized as fans simply didn't care. All they wanted to see was Mark Calloway's iconic portrayal on their screen. Yeah. Number what are you doing? The Red Rooster. <laughs> yep, seen this Taylor one. had immense talent as a pro wrestler, but the Red Rooster persona was never going to make him world champion. Nope. The infamous gimmick saw him don red tights and he would even strut like a rooster to the sheer confusion of the audience. <laughs> Number 53, The Kiss Demon. The Kiss Demon persona was introduced as part of WCW's deal with the band Kiss. Uh -huh. The Demon's entire presentation was based on Gene Simmons, uh -huh. who was portrayed by Dale Torberg. While visually impressive, the gimmick had no purpose other than to promote Kiss, and it didn't help that Torberg wasn't exactly bright heart in the ring, yeah. so most of the Demon's matches were very less than stellar. Number 52, Akeem. Oh my in 1988, God. <laughs> Slick announced that WWE star The One Man Gang was now reborn as African and planned to embrace his roots. Slick then announced that Gang would be known as his new name, Akeem the African Dream. Oh my the gimmick God. instantly received backlash as Akeem delivered a promo that was deemed as slightly racist. Yeah. The One Man Gang character was popular and had more room to grow, but the Akeem persona was completely insensitive oh. and what fans were pushing to see. This Number 51, awful. Big Josh. Upon signing with WCW, Matt Osborne was given the gimmick what of Big the, Josh. Hold on, hold on, hold on. That's the brawny towel man, the paper towel guy. What is this? The gimmick must have taken a matter of seconds to come up with, as he was an outdoorsman who had a friendly connection with bears. Even bringing some down to the ring, which, okay, was pretty cool. Number 15, yeah. Skip Sheffield. <laughs> Even though, I mean, that's, that's wild that they're bringing... Even bringing some down to the ring. Bringing some bears, that's that's kind of crazy, but at the same time, still, it's fucking, that's wild, bro. This is just all of this is wild. Okay, it was pretty cool. Number 50, Skip Sheffield. Now, before debuting as Ryback, uh -huh. Ryan Reeves used a character known as Skip Sheffield. Yep. The gimmick had poor writing and execution behind it, as yep. the character was just a cowboy, a gimmick that had been delivered a hundred times yeah. before. 
Number 49, the Johnsons TNA. The Johnsons tag team represented the worst of TNA. <laughs> the team which consisted of Richard and Rod Johnson. Johnson would compete in flesh-colored body suits, which were without question amongst the most horrific ring attires in wrestling <laughs> history. <laughs> this was the bottom of the barrel in terms of a character and gimmick, and it's hardly a surprise their run in the company was brief. Number 48, the Dicks. <laughs> In 2005, WWE decided to debut a new tag team known as the Diggs. Oh. The duo were addressed as Chippendales dancers, and the gimmick was dead on arrival. Yeah, so for the sure. Just didn't care about such a terrible gimmick. Yeah. They don't blame them. Number 47, the Ding Dongs. The Ding Dongs are often found at the top of the list of WCW's worst gimmicks. What is this? WCW executives believed that the duo would be insanely popular in the company. How? Very wrong. Very wrong. As the moment the duo appeared on screen wearing colorful outfits, the crowd booed immediately. <laughs> now, the gimmick is hard to explain, but in essence, one of the members of the Ding Dongs would ring a bell on the outside when the other was on the offense. It was incredibly frustrating, and it's no surprise the WCW audience absolutely yeah, loved it. That, that's Number 47, awful. Oklahoma. <laughs> mm -hmm. now, there have been some tasteless and controversial yep. parodies over the years, but the parody of Jim Ross that WCW presented in 2000 went a step too far. Of course the it did. would be known as Oklahoma and portrayed by former WWE writer Ed Ferrara. Ferrara would dress in a manner similar to JR, but he would mock JR's yeah. Bell's palsy which was where the majority of the criticism for the character came from. Yeah, that shit's cringe. It's fucking cringe. That's lame. It's not it's not entertaining television. It's just cringe. Even for that time period, we're talking about a time period where you could literally damn near say anything and voice your opinion on anything. Even then, that's just cringe. Number 45, Meat. And most fans remember Sean what? Stasiak for his time in WCW, or he may not have, but he also had a number of runs in WWE. His run in 1999 came as the infamous character known as Meat. <laughs> Meat was presented as a boy toy for the Predator oh, yeah. sisters, and it goes without this. saying that the name of Meat was holding him back from ever being taken seriously. Yeah. Number 45, Shelton Benjamin's Mama. During the Ruthless Aggression era, WWE attempted to do something new with Shelton Benjamin. Benjamin would embark on a losing streak, which led to his mama becoming an on-air character. Mama Benjamin would slap and yell at Benjamin whenever he lost, and she slowly began to interfere in his matches, turning him heel in the process. Shelton Number 43, Saba Simba. Uh. In 1990, the legendary Tony Atlas returned to WWE under the name of Saba Simba. In a unique move, WWE acknowledged the fact that the new character was in fact Atlas, but Vince McMahon on commentary decided to state that Atlas had rediscovered his roots and had now legally changed his name to Saba Simba. Of course. The gimmick was a warrior of a tribe, but it lacked any depth and naturally uh -huh. it received a ton of criticism from being based on a racist stereotype. Yep. Number 42, Naked Midian. Do we need to say any more? No. Well, we still will. So after his dealings with the Ministry and Darkness were over, WWE decided to repackage <sighs> Midian as Naked Midian. Awful He'd run gimmick. around the arena in a thong, and this was the Attitude Era at its yeah. very worst. Yep. Number 41, Isaac Yankum, DDS. And before Glenn Jacobs was chosen to portray the iconic Kane character, he mm -hmm. was given the character of an evil dentist, Isaac Yankum, DDS. Now, to be fair, Jacobs did the best with a terrible gimmick, and he yeah. managed to get a few matches with Bret Hart, which was great experience for a name that would be a mainstay with WWE uh -huh, for the but next it, two decades. It wasn't meant to last. Friar Ferguson. In April of 93, Mike Bell would be given the gimmick of Friar Ferguson. Ferguson was a mad monk, and the character received backlash from the Catholic Church of, of New course. York, leading to WWE scrapping the character indefinitely. Number 39, Bastion Booga. Ugh, ugh, just this, this, just all of this. All of this. Just throw it all away. Throw it in the nearest trash. I don't know who thought this was, was, ah, uh, who, why? Why was this on television back then? Mike Bell's next character would arguably be even worse as Bell became Bastion Booga. Booger was an unkempt, greedy man who wrestled in an attire that was way too revealing. Booger's entire character was that he was uh. disgusting, and the WWE commentary team would spend the majority of his matches commenting on his unpleasant odor. He by far has the most disgusting finisher ever uh. in WWE, or even wrestling. 
Number 38, The Shockmaster. Shockmaster. The Shockmaster's debut in WCW has been coined as wrestling's most infamous debut. Just how downright hilarious and botched it was. WCW's plans for The Shockmaster Love this were clip. for him to make a dramatic entrance on Flair for the Gold, but sadly it went horribly wrong. In the segment, the camera panned to a section of the set where a small pyro explosion went off. The Shockmaster then crashed through the wall wearing a Stormtrooper helmet. That clip will never not be funny because my man busted through the wall but failed and his helmet came off. Oh, I love it's easily one of my favorite wrestling clips of all time, bro. So it's so iconic. Which was covered in silver glitter. The Shockmaster would fall over and his helmet awkwardly stumbled off his head. The infamous character was then doomed from this point onwards. You can even hear the bulldog say he fell on his ass. Number 37, Kerwin White. In 2005, WWE decided to give Chavo Guerrero yeah. a brand new gimmick. Chavo would now go under the name of Kerwin White, and the gimmick would revolve around Chavo denouncing his Mexican heritage. Yep, I the gimmick remember this. Mostly involved Chavo making insensitive racial remarks to black wrestlers, which was a cheap and tasteless way to get heat on the character. Yeah. Number 36, the Booty Man. A British beefcake was an outstanding gimmick, but what? unfortunately, most of Ed Leslie's other gimmicks were atrociously executed. One of his gimmicks in WCW saw him become the Booty Man. The gimmick involved him being infatuated with his own backside, and of course, it fell flat almost instantly. Of course. Number 35, The Running Man. Now, before Beefcake had the dreaded Booty Man gimmick, he portrayed a character that was never given an official name by WCW. In 1991, a masked character would run in during matches, attack heels, <laughs> and then just disappear. It was never made clear what the crew No Running Man! Bro, he just run into random matches, attack people, and didn't leave. <laughs> That's funny. I'm not going to lie to you. Character, but it was quickly dropped without any explanation. That's Number 34, funny, bro. Rockabilly. A Billy Gunn was never going to break out of the lower mid card with the Rockabilly gimmick. Of the course. The saw him become the protege of the Honky Tonk Man, and it came across incredibly forced on WWE TV. Yeah. Thankfully, WWE quickly realized this and decided to have Gunn join forces with the Road Dog to become the New Age Outlaws. Mm -hmm. Number 33, Key. The Attitude Era had endless characters that have aged terribly. And yeah. Key is certainly one of them. He was portrayed by Vic Grimes, and his character was that he was a drug dealer and was somewhat associated with Prince Albert and Whoa. Draws. Number 32, PG-13. PG-13 were a tag team combination consisting of JC Ice and Wolfie D. The PG duo were known 13. for delivering horrible raps in the ring and having two of the worst wrestling names of all time. Number 31, Moppy. Mm -hmm. WWE decided Seen to give the one. talented Perry Saturn a new gimmick in 2001. Saturn would fall in love with a mop. Yeah, that's right, a mop. Whilst the gimmick was ridiculous, it did result in Saturn receiving the most positive crowd response of his entire WWE tenure. Uh, unfortunately. 13, Max Moon. <laughs> yeah. The idea for the Max Moon character, according to Conan, was a cyborg that was from outer space. The costume itself reportedly cost $13,000. Damn. And then WWE heavily invested in the bizarre and outlandish character. The character would debut in 1992 and would be portrayed by Conan. The gimmick <laughs> fell flat instantly and Conan opted to leave WWE due to backstage issues. Despite the gimmick being lackluster at best, McMahon decided to put the rather comedic costume on another wrestler, that being Paul Diamond. Mm -hmm. Number 29, Man Mountain Rock. Man Mountain Rock debuted in 1995 and he wore a colorful outfit and played a large guitar shaped as the classic WWF logo. That's a cool the guitar, though. was incredibly annoying and it was unclear if fans were supposed to root or detest the character. Yeah. Number 28, Quang. Quang? Quang was portrayed by Savio Vega and the Damn. character made his official WWE debut in early 1994. Quang. The gimmick was criticized for being cliche and stereotypical as the gimmick was a mysterious Asian wrestler and to try and enhance the gimmick, WWE had Quang use martial arts moves and of course, the Asian mist. Of can't course. Forget that. Yep, Number can't forget that. Number 27, Avatar. In an attempt to cash in on the success and popularity oh of the Power Rangers, gosh. WWE would give the future Al Snow a character known as Avatar. The gimmick saw him come to the ring and put on a mask to wrestle, and it was implied that he was obtaining strength and power from the mask. Number 26, Beaver Cleavage. Of when course he was. When Thrasher suffered an injury during the Attitude Era, WWE decided to repackage the other headbanger, Mosh, and would debut a new gimmick, and he'd be known as Beaver Cleavage. Beaver this character Cleavage. would appear in black and white vignettes with his mother, and it was implied that their association went beyond the normal mother and son I, relationship. I think I remember this vaguely. That's...
fucking wild. I know we, we tend to look at the past WWE with rose tinted glasses, but I can tell you this now. It wasn't all that good. Not all the time. When you have stuff like this, that's just wild. And not even in a good way wild. Like, whoa, what is this wild? This, that's crazy, bro. Yep. Yeah, we'll let you work that one out. Number 25, Chaz, the woman beater. Mm -hmm. Speaking of Mosh, the beaver cleavage character wasn't his only terrible gimmick. As when that gimmick came to an end, Mosh would use the name of Chaz, and he was involved in a storyline where he was supposedly beating his girlfriend. Eventually, it was discovered that his girlfriend was lying, and WWE decided to reform the Headbangers. Number 20. Okay, then. That's a oh, wow. Giant Gonzalez. In early 1993, WWE decided they needed a new foe for The Undertaker, so they introduced the world to one of the worst characters in WWE Easily. history, Giant Gonzalez. Gonzalez legit stood at seven feet tall and would wear a bodysuit which featured airbrush fake muscles as well as fake hair scattered in random locations. Yeah. The attire was laughable and the audience simply couldn't take the attire or the gimmick very seriously. That, that looks Number bad. Number 23, Fake Diesel. Yup. When Diesel departed WWE Remember in 1996, this. they decided to introduce a new version of Diesel fake played Diesel, by the future bro. King, Glenn Jacobs. Yup. <laughs> That's the crazy thing. And it was evidence that WWE would do anything to try and defeat WCW in the Monday Night Wars. Number 22, Fake, fake Razor, Razor Ramon. Ramon. Yeah. It wasn't just Diesel who re-debuted following Kevin Nash's WWE exit in 96. As following the exit of Scott Hall, aka Razor Ramon, they also reintroduced the character now played by Rick Bogner. Just like the reaction to Diesel's reintroduction, the character was met with disdain from the yeah. WWE audience. Number 21, Back Why? Cat. A character that acted like a cat was inevitably going to debut in a promotion like WWE. <laughs> and a cat type character debuted in the 90s under the name of Battle Cat. The character donned a cat like mask and oh to express his cat like agility, he would perform basic gymnastics around the ring. Yeah, bro, Number 20, what is this? DDP the Stalker. With <laughs> the incredibly popular DDP in 2001, they decided to turn him into a villainous stalker. DDP would stalk The Undertaker's wife, and it's yep. widely regarded as one of the worst character changes in wrestling history, and it completely <laughs> annihilated DDP's run in the company. Yeah, Number bro, nine, they shouldn't have him just trying to. <laughs> Stalk the Undertaker's wife. Why? Duke the Dumpster Drosy. Duke the Dumpster Drosy. Oh, uh, bro, just just look at look at look at him, bro. Look at look at what they got with him doing. <laughs> they decided to turn him into a villain. What in the stalker. jigsaw DDP is going on here? Look at this. Wife, and it's widely regarded as one of the worst character changes look. in wrestling history, and it completely annihilated DDP's run in the company. Oh nine, my Duke God. Duke the Dumpster Drosy. Duke the Dumpster Drosy debuted in WWE in 1996, and he was a literal garbage man. <laughs> he would carry a trash can to the ring, and it was never made clear how on earth the fans were supposed to positively connect to such a lame and underwhelming character. Number 18, <laughs> Slam Master J. In 2009, WWE opted to repackage Jesse from Jesse and Festus as Slam Master J. I remember J. him. Slam Master J was a rapper character, but it came across as awkward, unfunny, and yeah. fans ultimately hated the new persona. For sure. Number 17, Molly Holly's large backside. In 2002, the women in WWE had to take any storyline and give it to them in order to be awarded any TV time at all. In the summer of 2002, the main focus when it came to Molly Holly's character revolved around her so-called large backside. Baby faces would mock and belittle her behind on a weekly basis, and the gimmick has aged incredibly poorly. That's, Number that's 16, awful, bro. Carrying Cross's initial main roster for song. I'm glad this is on the list. Unfortunately, it sucks that it was Carrying Cross, but I'm glad this, this had to be on the list. It's one of the worst, worst costume designs gimmicks they could have ever did he was dead on arrival it was over donna when Karrion cross was initially called up to the main roster vince mcmahon decided to drastically alter his presentation cross would no longer have scarlet by his side and he would now wear a hideous helmet and suspenders the presentation immediately destroyed Cross's aura and legitimacy, and it was hardly a surprise that he was released within a few months. For sure, Luckily, bro. he came back and ditched the suspenders. Number 15, Jillian Hall's yeah, revolting this, growth. This was but before Jillian Hall debuted weird scene, and creepy gimmick, and no cringe. Bad, consultancy gimmick, which saw have a bizarre growth on her face. It's unclear what this gimmick was supposed to achieve, but the most notable moments saw the boogeyman uh, eat it off her face. Uh, yeah. Number 14, the lesbians. 
In 2002, <laughs> WWE became desperate to recapture the spark of the Attitude Era. Uh -huh. They hyped up lesbians having sex live on Raw. Uh -huh. Of course, this never happened, and the women who were literally given the name of the lesbians were attacked by three-minute warning. Number 13. Well, they were eviscerated. Why? Vince. Natalia's farting. Mm -hmm. In an attempt to repackage and awful, give Natalia awful. some much-needed character, WWE gave her a gimmick which saw her fart backstage. It was painfully unfunny, but it was apparent that Vince McMahon was finding the segments and character utterly hilarious, as the segments continued for what seemed like an eternity. That's awful. Number 12, Fake Kane. Fake Kane. One of the more criticized <laughs> in 2006 saw the debut of the imposter Kane, played by Luke Gallows. The real Kane was confronted by a man wearing the classic Kane attire, but the issue was that the attire was poorly fitted and it looked yeah. like WWE had purchased the outfit from a fancy <laughs> dress shop. Yeah. Fans had no interest in seeing two Kanes collide, and no. even though the real Kane was somehow supposed to be the heel in the feud, he yeah. was cheered, and the imposter Kane character was scrapped within a few weeks. <laughs> Number 11, Cedric Von Hausen. Before Johnny Gargano became oh, the best man. in ring in WWE, he was making an appearance on WWE TV I'm, in 2000. I'm, I remember seeing a clip about this, but I, I didn't know this was... <laughs> that's crazy. <laughs> Stick a Cedric Von Housen. What the hell is this? <laughs> and seven, under the name of Cedric Von wow. His gimmick was supposed to be the champion of Liechtenstein. And it's crazy because I didn't know that was Johnny. I, I've seen a video talking about this, but I did not know that was Johnny Gargano, man. <laughs> and there was no way that Gargano was ever going to be anything more than a jobber with this dreaded gimmick. Number 10, the Yeti. <laughs> Aron Reese portrayed two notorious gimmicks in WCW. In 1995, he played the character the Yeti, and the Yeti was in essence a mummy and was involved in a bizarre segment where he performed a double bear hug alongside the giant on Hulk Hogan. Number 9, Super Giant Ninja. Aron Reese's gimmick following the Yeti would see him become the super giant ninja. This gimmick was generic and dull, and the outfit Awful. looked incredibly cheap. Due to how basic and underwhelming the character was, it would be scrapped relatively quickly. Right. Number 8, Roadblock. The Roadblock character was such a literal character that Roadblock carried a genuine Roadblock to the ring, and his attire would sometimes match <laughs> the color of the sign. Based oh on my WCW's god, bro. Character, it was implied that Roadblock was unstoppable, with a name like Roadblock, fans were having a tough time buying into WCW's explanation of the gimmick. What's the point? Number seven, Men at Work. A Men at Work was a tag team duo consisting of Chris Candy. Bro, they were just coming up with random shit, bro. <laughs> Men at Work and a tag team. And Mark Starr. The gimmick was that of construction workers, and they would come to the ring in hard hats. Steady on with those out-of-the-box gimmicks, WCW. Number six, Arachnaman. The WCW <laughs> decided to give Brad Armstrong the gimmick of Arachnaman. Arachnaman this? had a striking resemblance yeah. to Spider-Man, and it was no surprise when Marvel Comics threatened to sue WCW yeah. and were forced to take the superhero character off TV. Yes, that's what it was. Five, Christmas Creature. <laughs> they got this hot Spider-Man. Arachnaman. <laughs> Not Spider-Man. Arachnaman, bro. Arachnaman? What in the great value version is this? Yeah, of course they would have to cease and desist, bro. That's come on. Arachnaman? Spider-Man? Oh my god, bro. During Glenn Jacobs' time in the USWA, he portrayed uh. a character known as the Christmas Creature. <laughs> the creature competed in a green onesie with candy cane stripe, and the most interesting thing about the costume was that it was created by Jacobs' own mother. Wow. Before, Becky Lynch, River Dancer. When Becky Lynch debuted in NXT, WWE decided Whoa. to give Lynch a generic gimmick which saw her perform an Irish dance. Wow. The gimmick was hated by the fan base, but Lynch gave it her all. Thankfully, WWE realized that Lynch had major potential as a top female star, so the Glad they got rid of elements that. of a gimmick were scrapped. Glad they got Number rid of three, that. Number three, Festus. I remember Lee this. Would play his most infamous <laughs> character to date when he portrayed the Festus persona. Festus was labeled as a mentally challenged and unresponsive <laughs> man, but when the bell rung, he came alive. Yep. In a nice twist on a terrible gimmick, when Gallows joined CM Punk's Straight Edge Society, the Festus character was still canon, as CM Punk explained that Gallows' mental state as the Festus character was down to his alcohol addiction. <laughs> oh my Number two, God. the knuckleball Schwartz. The knuckleball Schwartz's face was painted to look like a baseball, and he wore a jersey with the number 00 on the back. 
Oh which my was God, labeled bro. as the MVP, which stood for the most violent player, but this truly never came across in his in-ring work. Oh my and goodness. And number one, Mantar. <laughs> Mantar character is widely considered to be the worst wrestling gimmick of all time. Appearing in WWE, the gimmick was that of a minotaur who would charge and trample his opponents. The gimmick was heavily loathed upon arrival, and it was a clear indication that WWE oh God, was struggling bro. to come up with creative and compelling characters oh, in the mid-90s. This... have it, folks. 100 other... This was this was great, bro. I gotta I gotta like this video, y'all, because this was fantastic. Arachna man. Oh my god. Ah, oh, this was this is great. Ah, oh, this was fantastic. I enjoyed this video. If y'all haven't already, go subscribe to uh, WrestleMania. Oh man, this was fantastic. Arachna man, that's funny. I didn't even know that was Arachna man. Comment down below. Let me know what's the worst wrestling gimmick you've ever seen or heard of. If it wasn't on this list, I'm pretty sure a lot of y'all can definitely pick from this list alone of just awful gimmicks. But let me know what's the worst you've ever seen or heard of. I appreciate all the love and support you guys shown on channel. Road to 150K. And I'm still young, speedy YouTube wrestling champ of the world. Appreciate y'all kicking in with me. See y'all in the next one. Peace.